As Fanny moved swiftly through her studies, she became known among the school staff as a gifted student. Come in. Upon graduation, the institution offered her a teaching position. At the age of 22, Fanny was put on the school's payroll and began to instruct young minds on the wonders of rhetoric and history. This posting not only gave her a respected place in society, it also gave her a platform from which to recite and circulate her creative verse. Oh, such joy in thee. By 1906, the hymnal series Gospel Hymns and Sacred Songs, to which Fanny had contributed extensively, had sold over 15 million copies worldwide. Fanny donated all her royalties to a collection of charities and seminaries. It was the morning of February 12, 1915, when Frances Jane Crosby finally saw her savior. Fanny's funeral was the biggest Bridgeport had ever seen. People lined up for blocks to view the coffin, and many dignitaries and politicians attended. Fanny had insisted on a simple grave, preferring the money be used to help the poor and needy. Initially, her small gravestone carried the terse statement, she hath done what she could. In 1955, the citizens of Bridgeport replaced the stone with a more fitting tribute. The chorus to Blessed Assurance now forms the central portion of her epitaph. Fanny Crosby had never shown resentment or regret about being blind, or even about the charlatan who took her eyesight from her in her infancy. In fact, she appreciated the fact that her disability gave her deeper insight into spiritual matters. The last verse she wrote was not one of a despairing and dying woman, but a joyful, hopeful saint. song praising my savior 